Welcome to History at War, ladies and gentlemen. Today we start an extraordinary journey through history. We delve deep into the life of an Italian panzer ace, a man of war of the 5th Viking Division, Carl Nicolucci Lech. In the midst of World War II, amid the chaos and conflict, a remarkable and lesser-known figure emerged on the battlefield. Carl Nicolucci Lech, a brave and skilled tank commander, etched his name into the annals of military history. He saved the 5th Viking Division in a brutal encirclement known as the Battle of Covell. Who is this Italian commander? Carl Nicolucci Lech was born on the 14th of March, 1917, in Vadena, South Tyrol, Italy. Had an intriguing and eventful life. From an early age, he displayed a keen interest in intellectual pursuits, delving into the works of Plato and immersing himself in the realms of philosophy, law, and political science during his school years. This foundation would later shape his role and influence in the tumultuous political landscape of South Tyrol. As he grew older, Carl Nicolucci Lech became increasingly involved in various political organizations. Notably, he played a significant role in the South Tyrolean nationalist organization known as Volkischer Kampfring Suterol, VKS, which translates to People's Action Group in English. This group, with its strong nationalist and ethnocentric ideology, sought to promote the interests of German-speaking inhabitants in the region. When war was declared, Karl Nicolucci Lech's convictions and beliefs led him to take a decisive step towards serving in the military. On April 10, 1940, he volunteered to join the Waffen-SS, the combat branch of the infamous Schutzstaffel-SS, paramilitary organization. Assigned the SS number 423.876, Nicolucci Lech was soon posted to the SS Standarde Deutschland within the SS Verfügungstruppe, SSVT. Upon enlisting, Karl underwent rigorous training as part of the SSVT, a process that aimed to forge disciplined and fanatical soldiers fiercely loyal to the Nazi cause. Due to his dedication and abilities, he swiftly rose through the ranks, earning the promotion to Rottenfuhrer, which corresponds to the rank of Corporal. As a Rottenfuhrer, Karl Nicolucci Lech would have held a position of authority over a small unit of SS troops responsible for their training and discipline. As the tides of World War II surged across Europe, Karl Nicolucci Lech continued his military service within the Waffen-SS. By the time Operation Marita, the invasion of the Balkans, was underway, he had further distinguished himself and risen in rank to Scharfuhrer, equivalent to the position of Staff Sergeant. Operation Marita, launched on April 6, 1941, aimed to secure the Balkan Peninsula and facilitate the Axis powers campaign against Greece and Yugoslavia. During this campaign, Karl Nicolucci Lech displayed courage and leadership on the battlefield, earning him his first combat decoration, the Wound Badge. The Wound Badge was awarded to soldiers who suffered injuries during combat operations. As the inscription of this badge on his uniform would signify, Nicolucci Lech had experienced the harsh realities of war firsthand, and had been wounded while fulfilling his duties as a member of the Waffen-SS. For soldiers like Karl, the battles of Operation Merida were intense and grueling, with countless challenges and dangers faced on a daily basis. The campaign saw significant successes for the Axis forces, leading to the swift defeat of both Greece and Yugoslavia. Karl Nicolucci Lech's journey continued to take him through some of the most significant and brutal campaigns of the war. After his service during Operation Merida in the Balkans, he was transferred to the SS Der Führer Regiment which was a part of the notorious SS Division Das Reich. His new assignment would see him become a participant in Operation Barbarossa, the monumental invasion of the Soviet Union, which marked a turning point in the war. Operation Barbarossa was launched on June 22, 1941, with the objective of capturing vast territories in the Soviet Union and dealing a decisive blow to the Soviet military. As part of the formidable SS Division Das Reich, Karl found himself thrust into the immense and merciless Eastern Front, where the bitterly cold winters and the vast expanse of the Soviet landscape posed immense challenges to all involved. In the early stages of the invasion, the German forces, including the SS divisions, achieved significant territorial gains. They were seemingly unstoppable as they pushed further and further into Soviet territory, approaching the outskirts of Moscow. However, the Soviet Union's resilience and the harsh weather conditions began to take their toll on the German troops. During the advance towards Moscow, 
Carl Nikolusilek's military career took a devastating turn when he was seriously wounded in action. The exact circumstances of his injury are not specified, but the Eastern Front was infamous for its ferocity, and countless soldiers on both sides suffered grievous wounds and hardships. Being seriously wounded on the battlefield would have undoubtedly been a life-altering event for Carl. The physical and emotional toll of his experiences during Operation Barbarossa, along with his previous wounds from other battles, would have left a profound impact on him and his comrades. In November 1941, despite the challenges posed by his previous injuries, Carl Nicolusi Lech's dedication and abilities as a soldier caught the attention of his superiors. Recognizing his potential, he was selected for officer training and subsequently posted to the prestigious SS Junkerschule, a training school for future SS officers, located in Bad Tolz, Germany. During his time at the SS Junkerschule, Karl underwent rigorous and intensive training, honing his leadership skills, tactical knowledge, and military acumen. His time there was marked by grueling physical and mental challenges, designed to prepare him for the demanding responsibilities that awaited him as an officer in the SS. In April 1942, Karl Nikolusi Lech successfully graduated from the SS Junkerschule, earning the rank of Untersturmführer, which translates to second lieutenant. Armed with his newly acquired officer status, he was eager to put his training to the test on the battlefield. His next assignment placed him in command of a platoon within the second company of the 5th SS Panzer Battalion, which was a part of the esteemed 5th SS Panzer Division Wiking. This division was composed primarily of volunteers from various European countries, representing the multinational nature of the Waffen-SS during the war. As an Untersturmführer leading a platoon, Karl Nikolusi Lech's responsibilities were considerable. He was tasked with commanding and coordinating a group of soldiers, ensuring they were well-trained and prepared for combat. The role of a platoon leader required not only tactical expertise, but also strong leadership qualities to motivate and guide his men in the chaotic and high-stress environment of the battlefield. Karl Nikolusi October 1942, amidst the chaos and carnage of the Eastern Front, fate thrust Karl Nikolusi Lech into a pivotal moment of leadership. On this day, he was entrusted with an immense responsibility, the command of the first company within the 5th SS Panzer Regiment. The circumstances that led to Karl assuming this command were tragic. Earlier that day, during a fierce and relentless battle, all the company's officers had either been killed or grievously wounded. In the face of such adversity, it fell upon Karl to step up and lead the company, taking charge of the soldiers and guiding them through the perilous conditions of war. Commanding a company was a position of great influence and authority within the German military structure. It required not only tactical expertise, but also strong leadership qualities, the ability to make crucial decisions under pressure, and a deep sense of responsibility for the lives of the men under one's charge. As the newly appointed leader of the first company, Karl Nikolusi Lech had to earn the respect and trust of his subordinates quickly. The soldiers, who had witnessed the loss of their previous officers in battle, needed reassurance and guidance to continue their fight amidst the ongoing hardships of war. In this demanding role, Karl had to balance the strategic objectives of the larger military campaign with the welfare and morale of his company. He faced the challenges of maintaining discipline, fostering camaraderie among his troops, and ensuring their readiness for the intense and unpredictable battles that lay ahead. On March 28, 1944, Karl Nikolusi Lech, commanding the 8th Company of the 5th SS Panzer Regiment, received orders from SS Standartenführer Johannes Rudolf Mullenkamp, the regimental commander. His mission was to support an attack aimed at breaking the encirclement of Koval and liberating the trapped German garrison consisting of approximately 4,000 personnel from a cavalry regiment, an artillery battalion, a flak battalion, and around 300 railway workers. The 8th Company, equipped with 17 operational Panthers and a Burge Panther for tank recovery, was to assist the men of Grenadier Regiment 434 of the 131st Infantry Division. As they advanced towards Tupoli, the starting point for the attack, one Panther suffered a damaged gearbox and had to be towed back by the Burge Panther. Nevertheless, the company continued its push toward Koval, which was situated 15 kilometers to the east. On March the 29th, the German infantry's attempt to capture Nove Kozari and Ster Kozari was repelled by Soviet defenders, casting doubt on the besieged garrison's situation. Amidst discussions with the local commander about the Soviet defenses, a pivotal order arrived from Mullenkamp. 
while any further attempts to break the siege of Kavel were halted, orders were issued to continue advancing along the railway line at Cherkasy. The 8th Company, now with 16 Panthers after the loss of one, forged ahead with SS Hauptscharfuhrer Jürgen Faas, leading the column. The company faced intense opposition from Soviet artillery and anti-tank guns, but they managed to overcome these challenges and breach the first line of defense. However, the Panthers faced difficulties in the marshes, with some tanks getting stuck. Visibility improved later in the day, and Nikolaus Ilek ordered the company to advance. They eventually reached Cherkasy and encountered strong resistance at the hamlet. After intense fighting, the 8th Company managed to break through the defenses and continue their march towards Koval. With the arrival of Oberstleutnant Balm and his men, who joined forces with the Panthers to clear the remaining pockets of resistance, Mullenkamp instructed Nikolusi Lech to consolidate their positions and form a defensive line facing north and east. During the night, the mechanics retrieved three immobilized Panthers from the marshes, resulting in nine operational Panther tanks for the 8th Company on March 30th. Under the cover of darkness, the remaining Panthers embarked on the final stretch towards Kovel. They encountered and destroyed a T-34, but soon drove into a minefield, immobilizing two Panthers, including Foss's tank. The company, now with only seven fully operational Panthers, which is not enough to break the Koval encirclement. In the unforgiving crucible of the Eastern Front, Karl Nikolusi Lech defied the very essence of fear, charging forward against all odds and brushing aside orders to retreat. The battlegrounds trembled under the weight of Soviet forces mounting a determined counterattack, their war machines roaring and their soldiers like an unyielding tide. Yet, like a force of nature, Nikolus Ilek led his immobilized panthers, steely beasts of destruction, to stand their ground amidst the hail of bullets and torrents of enemy fire. The battlefield became a symphony of chaos and carnage, but the panthers under Foss emerged as an indomitable fortress, spewing thunderous salvos of fire turning enemy armor into twisted metal, and turning the soil crimson with the blood of their foes. With the heart of a lion and the tactical genius of a seasoned general, Nikolus Ilek masterfully orchestrated his eighth company in a relentless dance of death. They became a whirlwind of destruction, their spirits aflame with a fierce determination to overcome every obstacle in their path. In the face of despair, they bore down like an unstoppable storm, pushing deeper into the enemy's domain daring the Soviet forces to challenge their might. The encirclement of Koval seemed like an impenetrable wall of doom, but the 8th Company refused to bow to the shadow of defeat. Through sheer audacity and tenacity, they forged a path through the enemy lines, turning the tide of desperation into a glimmer of hope for the besieged defenders. Each step they took toward Koval was a testament to their unshakable resolve. The Soviet forces, once unyielding, found themselves bewildered by the unrelenting fury of the 8th Company. Nikolus Ilek's soldiers moved like phantoms of death, striking with surgical precision, reducing enemy tanks to burning hulks, and decimating infantry positions with ruthless efficiency. But it was the arrival of Kampfgruppe Mullenkamp, their engines roaring like a thunderous choir, that would be etched into the annals of history. United with the 4th Panzer Division's might, they formed an unbreakable spearhead, driving through the heart of the Soviet encirclement like a raging inferno, leaving destruction in their wake. The air was filled with the acrid scent of smoke and the screams of battle, but Nikolusi Lek's leadership was a beacon of courage amidst the turmoil. His unyielding spirit ignited the souls of his men, driving them onward through the darkest hours, forging a brotherhood bound by the crucible of combat. As the Koval defenders saw the 8th Company's resolute charge, hope ignited like a roaring blaze within their hearts. Together, they surged forward with newfound vigor, emboldened by the gallant warriors breaking the encirclement. The momentum shifted, and the Soviet grip on Koval began to falter. In the aftermath of the fierce battle, the ground bore witness to the toll of war. The 8th Company's combat prowess was legendary. Sixteen anti-tank guns silenced forever, two AA guns obliterated from existence, and a total of 17 enemy tanks left in ruins. Whispers among soldiers spoke of an even higher count, a testament to the ferocity of their assault. The Knight's Cross of the Iron Cross adorned his chest, a symbol of his courage in the face of overwhelming adversity. His actions and leadership stood as a beacon of inspiration for generations to come, a reminder that even amidst the darkest of battles, the human spirit can rise, undefeated, leaving an indelible mark on the tapestry of history. After the war, 
Carl Nicolucci Lech's activities in assisting SS personnel flee Europe for South America remained largely unknown for several decades. In 1948, seeking a fresh start and escape from his past, he decided to immigrate to Argentina, where he hoped to build a new life for himself. Settling in Argentina, he maintained a low profile and integrated into local communities while using his business acumen to establish himself. During the early 1950s, however, something pulled him back to his roots in the South Tyrol region in Italy. Perhaps it was nostalgia, a longing for familiar surroundings, or a desire to reconnect with his heritage. Whatever the reason, Karl Nicolucci Lech returned to South Tyrol and took up a position as an entrepreneur for Manisman, a renowned engineering and manufacturing company. It was here that he applied his skills and knowledge to contribute to the region's industrial and economic growth. In addition to his work as an entrepreneur for Manisman, Karl Nicolucci Lech's contributions to his community extended beyond the business realm. He was a man of vision and initiative, seeking to make a positive impact on the region where he had returned. Recognizing the importance of education, he founded the South Tyrolean Center for Education, an institution dedicated to promoting learning, knowledge, and intellectual growth among the local population. Through this center, he aimed to empower young minds and provide them with opportunities for a brighter future. Moreover, Carl's passion for the arts led him to establish the Museum of Modern and Contemporary Art in Bolzano, a cultural landmark that showcased the works of both local and international artists. The museum became a hub for artistic expression and appreciation, fostering creativity and enriching the cultural fabric of the South Tyrol community. His commitment to education also extended to higher learning, as he played a pivotal role in the establishment of the University of Claudia. This institution provided a platform for students to pursue various academic disciplines and research endeavors, contributing to the advancement of knowledge and expertise in the region. On August 30th, 2008, Carl Nicolucci Lech passed away in Bozen, South Tyrol. His death marked the end of an enigmatic life journey that encompassed both dark and industrious chapters. While history would forever be curious about his clandestine activities during World War II, his story serves as a reminder of the complexities of human nature and the choices individuals make during turbulent times. And that is the story of the Italian panzer ace Carl Nicolucci Lech. As we conclude this gripping tale, we are reminded of the indomitable spirit that defined the 8th Company of the 5th SS Viking Division. Their relentless determination and unwavering courage carved a path through adversity, leaving a legacy etched in history. If you found this video as captivating as we did, be sure to hit that like button and share it with fellow history enthusiasts. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more riveting stories of valor and sacrifice from the annals of military history. Thank you for watching, and until the next time, May their stories of courage and determination continue to inspire us all.